What's up everybody, Jeff here from Green Street Joinery. Today I wanna to show you the easiest way to build shaker doors and drawers. So we have our stock here. Uh, these sizes are arbitrary, but this is one inch by two and three eighths. And I've, uh, I've prepped it all, sanded it all on four sides to make sure everything is the same dimension. Um, this is gonna be three drawer heads for uh, a cabinet that's holding all of our podcast equipment. So I'll give you a look at that here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a dado in these and I'll show you how we get that set up. So here's how we'll get this set up. This is the material we're using for the panels. This is 3 8 inch uh, plywood. So what I do is I take my double square, it could be a combo square, or even just take a measurement and we'll set this thickness. Now what we do, we take one of our pieces and we transfer this dimension over. What you want to do is measure what you have left over. So what we have here is five eighths of an inch. So that's what's left over after we take the dado out of this to accept the plywood. So we have to divide that in half, five sixteenths. Five eighths divided by two is five sixteenths. So we'll have five sixteenths, our three eighths inch dado, and five sixteenths again. So now that we have our general dimensions figured out, what we need to do is we need to mark the rough dado on this piece. So what we'll do is we'll set our square to 5 sixteenths. And we'll come in from either end and mark. Turn this around, make it a little easier on myself. Now the key to making this the easiest way to build doors is this next dimension. We're gonna mark the depth of the dado, and that's a half inch. So here you can see, that's what we need to cut out. What we have here in the saw is a quarter inch dado stack. Now typically we're working with half inch panels so we would do this with a 3 8 inch uh, dado stack. This is a shop project so this 3 8 inch is fine. Uh, 3 8 inch plywood rather. So a quarter inch dado is what we're going to use. Now typically what you would do is you would take this dimension from this side of the board to the dado and set your fence here. But a trick I recently learned was to actually do it the other way around. So we're going to take the dimension uh, from this side of the board to the far side of the dado which is 22 30 seconds, which comes out to 11 16 11 Rob with the, uh, with the assist. With the head map. And we're going to set our fence here to this side of the blade, 11 16 Kids, pay attention in school. That's right. <laughs> All right, so we got 11 sixteenths, and, and we'll actually, we'll give it just another little tap because we're going to creep up on this. The way to set your height is to just take the piece, butt it up against the blade. This is a little easier if you have the fence out of the way first. And again, we're going to leave it a little bit low, and we're going to creep up on these final dimensions. It's not critical that these are exact right now. Now, the reason that we're setting it up this way versus the typical way. If this board comes away from the fence like this, well, we're gonna be cutting into our waist versus if this dimension was set and we came this way, we're cutting into the piece we're trying to keep. So I think that's a really good tip. So we're gonna go ahead, turn the saw on, bring this piece in and see where we stand. All right, so check it out. This is our first pass. You can see we have a little bit here that we need to take off and we have a little more height. So I'm just gonna keep creeping up on these. I'm gonna get right to keeping my line. I'm gonna flip the piece around, run it through again so that I cut this section out here and then I'll test and see if my piece fits. Safety 
first. So now that you think you've got your dado close, you're going to come over to our, our panel material and give it a shot, see if it fits. See that, that fits nicely. Not super tight, but goes on easy without a lot of wiggle. This is plywood, so I'm not too worried about it being, uh, you know, too tight and this expanding. If this was solid wood, um, you need to take those things into account. So, so this is a nice fit. You can see there. The marks, hopefully we're getting good focus. So that's the first step, cutting the dado in all of your pieces. So here's what we've got. Our top drawer will be four and three eighths inches high by 22 wide. Our middle drawer will be nine and three quarter inches high by 22 wide, and our bottom drawer will be 14 and a half high by 22 wide. So essentially what we need to do, we need 22 inches here. So we need to find out what size this rail needs to be. So the easiest way to do that is to flip these pieces around, put them outside to outside. Now what you're going to do, you may have seen this trick on another video. So we're going to take our tape measure. 22 is the width we're looking for. We're going to line that up with the dado here. And now reading the other side of the tape measure, 18 and 5 sixteenths. That's the total width of the rail, including the tenons. Now by making this a half inch deep, we know that our tenons are a half inch long. So if we cut our, our piece to 18 and 5 16 and put a half inch tenon on either side, we're going to end up exactly 22 inches outside to outside. So our next step here is to cut the tenons on these uh, rails. So to set the height of your blade, essentially what we want to do is we want to take off this amount. So you can lay the piece next to the blade and lower it until it looks like it's just a little low. And again, we're going to creep up on this, so leave it just a hair low. Now to set our fence, we know that we want a half inch long tenon. You can tell our saw needs a little adjustment on the wings. So actually, I like a square for this. Our dimension from the fence to this outside of blade wants to be a half inch. Now I changed this over to a 3 8 inch dado. I added one, one blade. Now again, leave this a little bit light. So I'm going to be taking not quite a half inch and we're going to creep up on it.
I should have mentioned that that was a sample piece. So this is the fit that we're looking for. So here's a good teachable moment. We have our rails, so our top drawer, four and three eighths high. Uh-oh, no room for a panel. It's actually too big. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna rip a portion off this side. So we're gonna leave the dado and we're gonna rip these down to probably I'm going to say an inch and a quarter. That way we have a small, it's going to be a very small panel on the inside. Obviously if you're building furniture, you don't want to lay things out this way. This is kind of just how it worked out um, for the shop. So uh, not giving it too much thought, but follow good design proportions. We wouldn't be using these sizes in real life. So we'll rip these down and we can measure for our panels. So there you go. You see I cut these down, gave ourselves a nice little panel in here. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to measure for our plywood, which will be our panel material. Uh, easy way to do this is to measure, basically dry fit your door. You can measure here. So the width I have 17 and 5 16 So we know that we have 18 and 5 16 here. That's an easy one. The overall rail length is the length of your panel. Now depending on what material you're using, you want to subtract some... Uh, some bit of dimension there to account for expansion and contraction. This is plywood, so I'll take off a, a 16th. So we'll make our panels 18 and a quarter inches wide. Now we can do the same thing here with a dry fit for the width. We have an inch and three eighths. So we know that there's a half inch here and a half inch here. That's two and three eighths. We'll take off a 16th. So that's two and five sixteenths. So this piece will be 18 and a quarter long really and two and five sixteenths wide. And we'll repeat that with the other two. All right, so I have our three drawer heads dry assembled. And here are the panel sizes that I pulled off of them. So they'll all be 18 and a quarter this way the bottom drawer will be ten and three quarter high, the middle drawer six inches high, and the top drawer two and five sixteenths high. So let's go ahead and get that plywood cut. So now that we have our panels cut, it's a good idea to actually dry fit these uh, just to make sure you didn't mess something up before you start gluing them up. So here, if you can see, we move the camera. This will be, keep in mind these are just dry fit. These are our Three drawer heads. Now these, we're not gonna paint, we're not gonna be too fussy with these because they're just for the shop. Um, you know, we like to do things like make a frame and panel door, but I'm not gonna spend all day, um, you know, sanding everything perfect and staining it or painting it. Might throw some tongue oil on it, but um, if these are painted, you're gonna wanna paint these panels first or at least paint the edges. Because when this door frame expands and contracts, you don't wanna see any unpainted portions become uh, revealed. Same same for stain. If you're going to stain it, uh, make sure you stain the panels first. So let's glue them up, show you what the cabinet looks like all finished.
So, I ran these through the drum sander over here. Uh, the only issue with that is you end up with some of these cross grain sanding scratches. Now, I hit these real quick with the Rotex um, just to get any residual mill marks or anything off. I'm not worried about the cross grain scratches here because, again, this is for the shop. So, these little shims, those are 1 8. Great to have in the shop. We have a bunch of different sizes. So before I attach these, I like to get them into the opening, make sure everything looks good. We have a eh, slightly bigger gap over here, but it's not a big deal. These are side mount slides, and, and they have a ton of play in them. So unfortunately, um, these gaps are probably going to change once I you know open and close the drawers a couple times anyway. But go ahead and get these attached, and be all set. So how I'm going to attach these is actually just with a couple brad nails from the front, then I'll open up the drawers, run in a couple screws from the back. Uh, this is just to make it easy, and a couple little nail holes we're not worried about, because again, this is a shop project, so. Shaker style frame and panel doors, our little podcast cabinet.